Good morning. Happy Thursday. Happy Thursday. Got my cup here. I love you to the mountains and back. <laughs> Mass General stores on the other side. Happy Thursday, guys. Happy Thursday. Good coffee this morning. Hope you all had a really good Wednesday. It was a good Wednesday for me. Hey, hey, guys. Happy Thursday. Happy Thursday, happy Thursday. <laughs> We're still in the devotional scene. Beautiful again by Lisa to Kirst. I'm telling you, grab your friends. Get them on here. This devotional is so good, guys. I'm telling you, you've been through anything, anything hard in your life. If you're going through a hard time in your life right now, man, this devotion is just speaking right to us. Um, so... I just, I don't think I've ever encouraged so much for people to hop on and listen. It's not about me, okay? Honestly, honestly. Um, I'm not asking you to get on here just to listen to me. I want you to hear the words that Lisa DeCurse has written in her devotional book here. Um, and the scripture and just, man, I really believe God um, just used her greatly through this devotional book to speak to so many people so many people. So anyways, here we are. Happy Thursday. <laughs> and um, the title today is, Why Would You Let This Happen, God? I love the titles of this because so many times it's things that we're thinking, but nobody really says out loud, right? But she says, Why Would You Let This Happen, God? Why Would You Let This Happen? That's the title. And the um, key verse is 1 Kings 19, 3. And it says, Elijah was afraid and ran for his life. And um, in the devotion, she breaks this down and kind of explains what that verse is all about. So if you're watching me live, give me hashtag one. If you're watching the replay, give me hashtag two. And I'm going to jump right on in this devotion here this morning. All right. So she says, I have a really bad tendency when, when something hard or threatening happens. In a split second, all of the worst case scenarios pop into my mind. And before I know it, my emotions start spinning spiraling. Can anybody relate? I'm not sure why I have this tendency, but the only way I've found to manage it is to pre-decide the truths I must factor into every event where I start to feel myself getting swept away in fear. These are three truths I literally speak out loud over and over, and I want y'all to type these, all of you, whoever wants to type. I don't care how many times it's in the comments. I want this typed out, so please, please help me out here. One, God is good. I'll wait. <laughs> I want you to type it in the comments. God is good. These are the, the truths that she speaks to herself, and I want them in here because I want people to see them. It's going to mean so much as I get through this devotion with y'all today. God is good. The second one, God is good to me. God is good to me. Type it out. Thank you. Thank you. God is good to me. And then the third one, the third one is God is good at being God. God is good at being God. So these three things, these three truths is what she literally speaks out loud to herself when she faces these difficult situations. One, God is good. God is good to me. And God is good at being God. Thank you, Cindy. Yes, God is good at being God. This should be my starting place. But when looking at my circumstance, when looking at my circumstances, this should be my starting place. I'm not saying this is easy, but these truths help me consider good things God might be doing, even when the realities that don't feel good at all, right? They bring me back to the goodness of God as the starting place for my continued trust in Him. When I don't do this on the front end of processing what's in front of me, I'll quickly start asking, why would you let this happen, God? 
right? How would you let this happen, God? I've had some really heartbreaking things happen in my life over the past couple of years. I've had so many ideas of how my life should go, including notions of what a good God would and would not allow into my life. I said I trusted God, but in reality, I think I trusted in the plan I thought God should follow. And when my life took shocking turns so far from my expectations, my soul shook. My peace evaporated and everything in me wanted to run and hide and stop trusting God. Man, I love that she says that. Let, let me say that again. She said, I trusted God, but in reality, I think I trusted the plan I thought God should follow. Right? How many times we do that? We want him to line up to our plans instead of us lining up to his. I know that's a hard, I know it's tough. Listen, that is the exact place we find Elijah in 1 Kings 19. But to set up the context for what is happening, read the previous chapter, 1 Kings 18. We see God use Elijah to prove to the nation of Israel that he's the one true God in a miraculous and powerful way. Elijah must have been on a high seeing God do what he expected God to do. And in essence, Elijah looked good himself as the prophet who won the showdown at Mount Carmel. I mean, if you've never read it, you really need to go read it because it is incredible, incredible how God showed up, okay? But oh, how quickly things can change. <laughs> how quickly Elijah's absolute trust in God evaporated with one death threat from Queen Jezebel. 1 Kings 19.3 says, Elijah was afraid and ran for his life. The events that took place in 1 Kings 18 and then 1 Kings 19 were both spectacular and sobering. Spectacular as we see the Lord magnificently prove his supremacy and might to all of Israel. Sobering in that in spite of God's tremendous showing of power, King Ahab and Queen Jezebel were not overthrown, and Elijah ended up running for his life into hiding. Mm. Why was Elijah fearful and in despair? I have a feeling his desperation came from the same soul-shaking place I mentioned earlier, unmet expectations. Elijah probably assumed Ahab and Jezebel, un their unholy reign, would come to an end after the mighty feet of the Lord. Yet that was not the outcome. And in that place of unfulfilled expectation, Elijah succumbed to the fear of persecution. Even though Elijah had experienced the miracle on Mount Carmel, he fled into the wilderness, exposing the truth that even a great prophet like Elijah was still human and, can fall and could fall terribly short in terms of both faith and affection for the Lord. Even so, the Lord dealt graciously and gently with Elijah, drawing him close with a whisper and giving him instructions for what to do next. God didn't fix things the way Elijah thought they should be fixed, but he did lead him. And isn't it interesting, the Lord led him back through the wilderness. If you, that's 1 Kings 19, 15. He led him back through the wilderness. After all, that's where often where God takes his people to teach them his perspective that blooms into deeper faith. Whew. The Lord gave Elijah a second chance to face the same struggles he'd been dealing with before he ran and hid, except this time with right perspective and faith. Elijah saw God's plan was good even if it wasn't the way Elijah would have written it himself. And the same is true for us. God's plans don't have to match our plans for them to still be good. Let me say that again because, man, that is worth repeating. It's worth putting in the comments. God's plans don't have to match our plans for them to still be good. I know it take a second, soak it in, because it's so powerful, and it really has, it makes us remove ourselves, right? 
it kind of knocks down that pride inside of us that we think we know it all, right? God's plans don't have to match our plans for them to still be good. What can we personally take away from studying these events in Elijah's life? Perspective is the key to trusting God. And so often the clarity we need to see things from God's perspective comes from the wilderness experience we all wish we could avoid. Whew, man, don't we? We wish we could avoid it, right? But that's where we get clarity, right? Mm. Maybe the three truth filters that help me can help you in whatever life circumstances seem unfair, unreasonable, or hurtful beyond what you can bear. God is good. God is good. God is good to me. God is good at being God. Man. Yes, thank you, Nicole, for typing that in. Then she prays, Father God, I'm so thankful you don't condemn me for any fears. Help me use your word to preach truth to my own soul when I start to doubt your goodness. Let it remind me that you see me, you love me, and I am safe, both in your hands and in your plans. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Man, what a good, good lesson for us today. That man, just because it's not our plans that are unfolding doesn't mean that it isn't good. Doesn't mean that God doesn't know what he's doing. Just because things take a turn and we're like, whoa. And the things that shake our very soul doesn't mean that he isn't good. Let those truths just come right back to you every single time. We don't know what today will hold. We don't know what the next moments will hold. We don't know if we're going to get a phone call. God forbid. We don't know. We don't know. But those things we have to have right here at the front of our mind, when we feel that overwhelming feeling, that sense just come over us, we have to know that God is good. He is good to me, and he is good at being God. Mm. Take that with you today on this Thursday. Remember it. Man, put it, put it up here and let it get right down in here into your heart and know it. And let it come up every time those fears, those anxieties, those worries, those things try to come in and take over and cloud your, vis your vision, your view, your perspective on things. Let God have his way in you and know that he is good and that he is good to you and that he is good at being God. Y'all have a wonderful Thursday. Be blessed and I will see y'all tomorrow on the EMJ Daily. Bye guys.